Hi there, I'm Raf Garcia, a director at UK Education Guide, a UK leading comparison portal for international students and families to help them make really well informed decisions about studying in the UK. In this video, we are exploring the different learning environments at a university. In particular, we are exploring seminars and how to prepare for them. A huge thank you to Costanza and Sheila from the University of Nottingham who contributed to this video and gave us all their insights. So we hope you enjoy. Welcome. It is my privilege to introduce Sheila and Constanza to today's UK Education Guide video. Welcome guys, how are you getting on? Oh, all good. How are you doing? How are you? Very, very good. Very, very good. Thank you for asking. So in today's video, we're live at the University of Nottingham um, and we're exploring some of the intricacies around what an actual seminar looks like. Something we're constantly asked by our international students and families around the world and something we're really looking forward to exploring today. So before we dive straight into the questions, I would love to hear a little bit about yourselves. And um, so if we could start with Constanza, please talk a little bit about sort of where you're from, uh, what course you're studying, what year you're in, and kind of how you're finding the experience in Nottingham. Of course. Hi, everyone. I'm Costanza. I'm from Italy, and I'm studying physics. I'm actually going into third year. Um, it's all going really good. Uh, second year was kind of hard, but uh, we managed to get through it, and I love it. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And Sheila? Uh, yes, so my name is Sheila. I go by Nico. I'm from Vietnam. Uh, right now, I'm a third student in pharmacy, but uh, I'm going to the fourth year, my final year in September 2020. And my experience in Nottingham has been wonderful, I think. I have learned a lot and I feel I have grown a lot as well. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And we look forward to hearing kind of more about those experiences. So without further ado, let's dive into the first question. And this one comes up time and time again, and, I, and I'm sure you guys probably had the, the same same thoughts as you were coming to, to study in the UK. And, and that's understanding what's the difference between a lecture and a seminar. So I don't know if anyone wants to jump in with that. Um, I could do. So from my experience, a lecture is more focused on absorbing and kind of like absorbing information, taking notes, mm -hmm. listening to the lecturer. Whilst the seminar is a more contained environment where you can focus more on problem solving and kind of ask help if you need. So it's more self-focused in a way. So, yeah. Absolutely. Fila, any thoughts on that? I mean, it's interesting from the perspective we get from a lot of students, whether you're international or even a home student. It is interesting how little is talked about kind of what what actually goes on and and because obviously you, before then when you're in sixth form or at college it's normally you just have lessons so what are your thoughts Dila? uh yes so um i mean no uh, i think just um the thing is like um, we have a lot of different courses so in my course uh, a seminar is more like a group discussion so um yeah it's more like to check our knowledge so most of the time i will be i look in a group with uh, some other students and we'll be given a set of questions that we need to go through together. And then uh, we'll have a facilitator who's available there to answer any of our questions. And uh, I always always uh, find seminars very useful because I can check my knowledge and my understanding. And also I can like communicate and interact with my classmates who might have a lot of different like amazing ideas. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's something to, to, to really kind of look forward to. Next, I'd really like to explore kind of uh, the differences in the amount of time you spend in lecture and, and in seminar. I know obviously all courses will be different, so this doesn't represent kind of all courses at all universities. Um, but I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the, the amount of time per week you spend in seminars versus the amount of time a week you spend in, in lectures. So, so Thila, if I, could, if I could start with you. Uh, yes, um, I have to say we have a lot of lectures. I think we have like 10, 12, 15 lectures depending on the module. But we often have like two seminars per week, two hours each. So about maybe 15 hours for lectures and four hours for seminars. So not too busy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, my experience is a little bit different because 
for my course, we've been doing mostly online classes still. So we do have engagement sessions weekly, but they're usually an hour long for every module. But then the rest is all online content and videos. But usually, I think the lecture lecturers tend to aim for about two to three hours of online content per week, per module. So it's going to be about, yeah, 18 to 20 hours of content every week. Whilst for seminars, we do have two uh, workshops or seminars every week, and each one is two hours long. So pretty much the same as Nicole. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And, and now to sort of the, 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 the difficult question, which is, so how many hours a week do you kind of spend devoting to to, to prefer, so for preparing for, for lectures and, and for seminars? And, and obviously each course is going to be very different, but I'd love to kind of hear about how you, you fill, not fill those hours in between, but obviously coming from a schooling environment where these students will have kind of all of their time very much scheduled in, to kind of having just a significantly more amount of free time. So if we start with Costanza. Yeah, so for lectures, I usually do about half an hour to an hour preparation for each module, which is about reading through what we're going to cover in the actual lecture. Whilst for seminars, I go through the content that we've already covered so that I kind of make sure I note down any questions I want to ask or maybe anything I'm kind of like not sure about. So then I can ask the demonstrators or lecturers that are in the seminar. So again, that's about half an hour to an hour per module. Absolutely. And I think the trick with there is, is, is asking, having those set questions written out, because that's the beauty of the seminars is that you're, you're generating a smaller group and, and sometimes it's much easier to, to ask those questions. So, Dila? Uh, I guess uh, it really depends on the module. So some of the lecturers expect her to do a lot of hard work. Uh, for example, I was in a seminar last year where the lecturer requested us to read like three articles. So I did spend like three hours on the preparation. Uh, and also like prior to the seminars, we often get a list of questions, like things that we should like, you know, cover before seminars and uh, some of the you know, lists can be very long. So I guess it's really up to the person because I do know like people who they are just better not doing, you know, the preparation and then they still do really well on the spot without having to study too much, which is really good, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I think that's a superb bit of honesty. And, and I think, again, with all of this, it's about understanding what style works well for you. And I think that's, that's one of the key true, differences yeah. with, with, with the experiences is at university is, is how do you get into the rhythm that works for you? So for some people, that's having like loads of discipline, structuring their day, writing it in. And for others, it's being a little bit more laissez-faire with their planning. Um, but I often say to students, start with a discipline and then kind of deviate away from that, if that makes sense. Because if you start away from that, it's very hard to then build it in. And, and you're going to have so much more time than you would have before. But the trick is with all of this is that how do you utilize that time to, to, to have it, its best effect, really? So, so we've talked a little bit about um, the duration of the seminars, kind of what they are. Now, what are the types of preparation that you, you kind of, find that you, you have to do for these seminars. So we talked a little bit around kind of answering questions, a little bit about pre-reading. Are there any other kind of interesting seminar preparation activities you, you guys have been asked to do? Probably get a coffee beforehand. <laughs> that can be useful. <laughs> no, I think uh, once again, as you said, Raph, it's very like what works for you. And personally, I kind of just read through the content and do that. But I know some of my mates, they kind of, they do questions beforehand. Because in our case, we do get given questions in the seminar, but only on the spot. We can't look at the questions beforehand. So it's kind of like we have to go there and do the questions, if that makes sense. It makes complete sense. Mm. Uh, I mean, um, I guess for me, because um, uh, obviously pharmacy is about diseases and conditions. So, you know, seminars, we can read a lot of articles, a lot of research, you know, guidelines online to uh, kind of like get more knowledge and more understanding of the conditions discussed in the seminar. And uh, I know like if, because in pharmacy, you know, we might have a specialty in our career. So uh, some people can really dig into the topic and get a lot of information before the seminar. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure how much it applies to sort of both of your courses. 
But in, 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 in other courses across the board, you can kind of watch YouTube videos. You can broaden out your learning just to beyond articles. And, and I find it, no matter what subject, there is normally interesting video content out there. And sometimes mm -hmm. it is worth kind of just if your seminar leader or your academic kind of gives you a few themes to look around don't just use like a traditional search engine like Google, use other search engines like YouTube, oh, yeah. because sometimes it's kind of easier. Sometimes you'll be going through these problems and challenges and you just need someone to explain it to you. So, so that's one mm -hmm. of the things that I will add. But and like we're saying throughout, it's about tailoring the experience to kind of what learning really, really works for you. And um, so on, in terms of kind of enjoying seminars, what do you guys see as sort of the main benefits from, um, from undertaking a seminar and not as opposed to a lecture, but what are the things that you enjoy about them? Uh, there's loads in my experience. I don't even know where to start. So um, obviously you get that one-to-one -one interaction with the demonstrator, which is really good. Obviously, if you've got questions or anything, you can ask straight away. But, um, but also you get to socialise with your course mates because you can choose whether to do the team working or something. Um with other people on your table, for example, you're all sat together and you work on questions or you can do some more independent learning and kind of focus more on you kind of understanding what you're doing. Um, but yeah, so that's the nice thing. You can do both. And I do think that is quite nice. Mm, yeah, I mean, I totally agree. Because um, obviously, you know, we have a list of questions and some of the questions can be very hard, like really difficult. And Without my good mates, I would be stuck. I wouldn't have any ideas. But then uh, because we are in a group and I can listen to their ideas and also express my ideas, I think it's really helpful to learn from others. And also, um, uh, you know, like sometimes when you are in a lecture, you feel like, oh, you understand everything. This is amazing. I can get an A or like a hundred percent. But then when in a seminar, you get to know, oh, there's a lot that I don't know. And, um, this is, you know, my opportunity to ask my questions and to see if um, there's more to learn. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to add something if it's possible, is that um, the type of questions, as you've said, Nicole, they're very much harder than sometimes the kind of questions that you do is just practice on your own. So mm -hmm. I think that is really good practice also to do harder questions. And sometimes they're, they're as hard as exam questions or harder. Mm -hmm. And they're definitely different from an exam style question. They kind of make you think outside the box. And that's why sometimes maybe you don't get through all the questions, but that's perfectly normal because the level of difficulty is significantly higher. So, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm just, I'm loving the insights we're getting out of this one. This is, this is the gold dust that you, you won't get on like a normal website. So I'm just getting very excited about this. So, so thank you so much for, for your honesty. This is, this is going to be absolutely invaluable for, for our students. And um, so we talked a little about the, the challenge of these seminar questions. Now, do you, do you, so in terms of how, so firstly, are you ever assessed in a seminar, if that makes sense? Does it ever have an impact on your grade? Um, and then secondly, do you find that, um, how does your work in your seminars kind of affect the way in which you do your assessment, if that makes sense? Two relatively broad questions, but I'd be really interested if you both to talk a little bit around how you feel that seminars impact your assessment. Um, right. So they're not assessed, at least not, not for me. Uh, so that kind of takes away off your shoulders. You're not assessed, you're not under pressure and you kind of can just give it a go with a certain approach that you think is going to work. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, because you're not going to be assessed on that. Um, but then in terms of preparation for the actual exam, I think that by doing harder exam questions, when you actually find yourself in the exam, to an extent, it seems easier because we've been practicing so much on harder things, but also the kind of, when the demonstrator goes through the solutions, sometimes um, it really clicks a solution. I don't know if that makes sense. It kind of like, oh, that's the kind of um, working I, I can go through to get the answer. And then you can use that in an assessment. I hope mm. that makes sense. I think it's similar for me. Uh, but uh, um, so our work, um, seminars and workshop as well, all of them, or even lectures are not assessed. We don't have any like exams or quizzes in the middle of a seminar, but uh, they are compulsory. So you need to attend them to, you know, do the exams to be able to 
do the exams. Um, but um, I guess uh, it's just because, uh, you know, in a lecture, we learn about diseases, symptoms and treatments. But then in a seminar, we're given a patient with, you know, some background, some history. So they try to like contextualize the condition. So that is easier to understanding. And then when we see them again in an assessment, we know, oh, actually, uh, I remember the patient in the seminar that has these the kind of disease and, oh, I can, you know, easily remember the treatment, what I should do as a pharmacist, for example. So I, it's really, really useful, I think. A absolutely. And I know, obviously, the, the courses you're both doing are, are unbelievably scientific. And sort of, I would say those sentiments though, are across the board in all subjects. You often find that the lectures, as we mentioned earlier, are, are quite theory based. And even if you're doing a business related topic, you'll likely be putting some of that in practice in your seminars, whether that be doing accounting, whether that be producing a marketing plan, whether that be collaboratively delivering a presentation. So in different subjects, you're going to have slight nuances towards this. But again, lectures more about the theory, seminars more about kind of putting it into practice. And um, so the last two questions that I'm going to ask you both. Um, the first one is um, relatively, relatively straightforward, which is, do you enjoy seminars? And then follow it up with kind of what is the one piece of advice that you would give to students who are looking on embarking on their seminar experience and university experience in the next few years? And um, what would you recommend doing uh, in terms of before you prepare for a, for a seminar? So who should we go to first? Whoever jumps in first. Um, so for me, um, because uh, we have 250 students in my course, so we have uh, five different big groups, 50 people in one group, which is quite huge. But then uh, I think it works really well because uh, I often had about you know, seven group mates in one seminar. And I get, I guess it's a perfect number. Yeah. I think um, for us, there's about 20 people in a seminar, but mm. eat, like we form little groups of that makes sense of about five people. So then it's easier for the demonstrators to manage, but also you can interact more easily rather than just trying to communicate to all the 20 other people. But one piece of advice I do have is definitely to show up to the seminars, even if you're, as in, in general, if you're behind with content for whatever reason, still show up. I know you might not be caught up, but still that experience, that interaction is really useful. So I think that's the main piece of advice. Absolutely. And I think that's some powerful word, uh, words to end this session on. So um, Fila, Constanza, Thank you so much for your time today and your insights. They're, they're invaluable. We've learned so much more about the University of Nottingham, but also crucially about the intricacies of seminars. And um, before we go, a big thank you to Charlie and for, from your admissions team for putting this all together. Um, and we look forward to catching up with you all soon. So see you later and have a great day. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye.